our YouTube family. We're finally about to catch the second leg of the flight. Walking through the airport to the gate now. Man, I had a dope time at the uh, Jay-Z exhibit. Had a really good time, man. It was dope. One of my favorite artists. Got a chance to kind of check him out, feel the vibe out. It was cool. So, we on our way. How long we got? Okay, I think we got about seven hours. So, um, do that. And then we gonna head so to the next about leg. About seven hours. About a seven hour flight. Just touched down in Turkey. We're at the airport. Um, we got one more leg of our flight to get to our destination. Thank God, I am burnt. You see my eyes is bags. I'm through. Um, we got about another seven and a half hours, and then we will be where we need to be. Thank God. Um, the flight wasn't too bad. We upgraded our seats, had some good leg room, so that's cool. You know, I'm a big guy. I need I need that room now. You know what I'm saying? Give me that room. So uh, that was cool. Um, yeah, I'm about to get ready to board. Keep coming with us and we'll check in in a minute. Peace. A few moments later. Do you really want to put the camera on? It's on. I know, but is that really what you want to do? Uh, Fuck it. So we're at Turkish Airlines. I, I, okay, I, went, I, I don't. I went I and tried to get some food for us and it backfired. So I decided to try to get a McChicken real quick and I cost us our original flight. So here we are checking into the IGA lounge, getting ready to kill some time, charge our phones because I was greedy. My wife is pissed. She look at her. This is Judge Judy over here. Look at her, angry. Diary of a mad black woman. We finally made it to the, <laughs> the replacement flight. All because of what? Uh, Tell everybody what really happened. What really happened was that the um, duty-free shops don't sell water, and I had to go in the long gas line at McDonald's. So no, that's it. He was told not to get McDonald's. That's not true. That's cat charge. Right. I know the vibe. So we finally, we finally getting out of here. White piss. Um, that McChicken cost us about eight hours worth of time. Cost me about fifty-eight dollars, but it's all love. Um, we getting ready to slide, man. We sliding out. We about to leave, um, leaving Istanbul. We got to um... Let me get the camera. I will be letting everybody know what truly happened. Okay, cool. So, speaking of that, um, we are leaving from Turkey, Istanbul, Turkey. Um, we're going straight to Ethiopia. Actually, it's crazy. We're going to Ethiopia. Got an eight-hour layover in Ethiopia, and then we'll be leaving from Ethiopia, getting to our final stop. Um, it's been a long day, long journey. I think it's total about 26 hours of flight time, but it's all good. We're gonna get there. We're gonna have a good time. All right, check with us. Thank you. Super tired, be the board in the lounge, get some food real quick. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna be out of here, get on our last flight, finally touch down, finally get the vlog really going, have a good time, and um, yeah, we're gonna turn up. All right, check with y'all in a minute. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. 
my mind On a million foe, I turned 26 But that's just what it costs for that condo at the bridge I got this European belt European bitch, ever seen an African in the European whip? I got my top off. After about 28, 29 total flight hours, we finally made it to Ghana, bro. Accra. 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 A C C R A. Accra. We made it. I don't know if I can handle this. Going back home, we might have to stay. Might just be new residents. I don't know, man. That's a lot. Man. But we get the bags. Got some family coming, and we gonna get it popping. Touchdown in Ghana, finally. I know you got 70 excursions for us today. So, probably won't go to sleep until Tuesday. Finally got our bags. <laughs> finally got our bags. <laughs> it's time. We can go ahead and start now. Twenty-seven years. Twenty-seven years. Yeah. Twenty-seven years. Twenty-seven years. Twenty-seven years. Twenty-seven Ay, Africa, yeah Africa, oh, yeah Kelvin boy is calling When I dance, you dance, oh When I see my friends, yeah I say, Charlie, what's up, oh Everybody happy, yo, yo Yeah, Afro beat tonight Yeah, we come together When everybody feels Okay. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I appreciate it. 12 or 6? 12 floor. Okay, perfect. Highest floor we have. Highest floor. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Damn, even you sitting, good. they got family chairs. Damn. Yeah, they, they on that. Number one, Oxford Street. This is literally the best hotel in Ghana. This is a true fact. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. You don't believe me. It's the real deal. Mm -hmm. See, y'all y'all doing Bentley pillows and chairs, huh? <laughs> Bentley? Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's a nice hotel, man. It's really eclectic. I like the decor in here. It's nice. All right, YouTube family, man, finally, we have made it to our destination. Man, Ghana, I'm not going to lie to y'all, it's a beautiful destination. Um, the hotel we staying at is, man, top tier. I'm like, I'm loving it, actually. Been to a lot of countries. It's, it's hitting harder so far. Um, we about to finally shower up, freshened up, me and the wife. We about to get ready to head out on the town, go to the market, see what we see. So I need to give y'all a little backstory as to why Ghana hit as hard as it does. 
I am a Ghanaian American. I never really talk about that like that, but my mother's American, born and raised in um, Detroit, Michigan. My father is actually born and raised in Ghana, Accra, Africa. He's he's Ghanaian. So it hits home. That's why I had a French last name. All of that, it hits home because of that. So really, I'm at home. I'm coming home. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of, that's like a fun fact about me. Um, but yeah, so I just had to give you all a little bit of information just so you can understand the 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 importance of this trip. pickpocket and this man it's everything um they they literally sell everything jewelry magnets clothes fish shrimp just steaks eels whatever you want they got it clothing um head wraps bond i mean bro they have everything i mean tires packs of weave i mean shit a dozen eggs whatever you need they have it out there man it was really crazy but it was good to kind of see the bartering system, how how they playing it. Um, yeah, so now we about to get something to eat and uh, continue the night. Just keep. YouTube family, was good with y'all? How y'all feeling today, man? It's Sunday, November eighteenth, two thousand twenty-three. Uh, it's about six thirty local time out here in Accra, Ghana. So basically, you know, this is the rooftop view, you know, from the hotel room. This is our uh, wraparound balcony. It's nice. Um, so we have a guided tour today. Our tour guide is getting ready to come pick us up. It takes us about two, two and a half hours away from the hotel into the inner city. Get a chance to be able to, um, you know, explore, learn some history, see some family. Like I said, I did mention um, I do. My dad's side of the family is Ghanaian. Um, so we'll get a chance to get into all of that today. So yeah, stay tuned, come with us, and we'll, uh, we'll learn together. What is this magic? I need that magic. <laughs> Everywhere you go is the main attraction. Your yarn shows a house to be a mansion. When you're on the road, this is a distraction. All the things you wear are the latest fashion. See your hands so big when now you function. Hips to your waist is out of proportion. Trip down your backside is like excursion. You can take my money, I don't mind extortion. Remix. 
Mini easy, Mr. Gonna bounce, Mr. Chit Chit Chat, the we gonna bounce. I love the way your body no be straight, if you run about. I for stay all night, but I got to bounce. Mini easy, Mr. Gonna bounce, Mr. Chit Chit Chat, the we gonna bounce. I love the way your body no be straight, if you run about. I for stay all night, but I got to bounce. Gonna bounce, gonna bounce, over key, the joke, we gonna yeah, details. I'm going to take you to the dungeons, the male dungeon, the female dungeon, the male condemn cell, the female punishment cell, the door of no return, the courtyard. We are going to go upstairs to see the residence of the prisoner, the auction hall of the slave castle, the church on top of the Muslim dungeon. And when we are done with everything, we are going to come back through the door we call the door of return. And the Dove Return was introduced in 1998 by the Global African Family to commemorate and also to bridge the gap between the Africans here and those in the diaspora. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to Cape Coast Slave Castle. My name is Ton Buidi, and Europeans built three slave castles in the whole of West Africa. All the three slave castles Europeans built in the whole of West Africa are located in Ghana. And they also built over 60 slave forts, over 45 of them allocated in Ghana. Because of gold, Ghana was known as Gold Coast of West Africa. Now the three slave castles are El Mina Slave Castle, Osu Slave Castle, and Cape Coast Slave Castle. The Portuguese built El Mina Castle in 1482. The Danes established Osu Castle in 1661. And the British built this one in 1664. But all these three slave castles you see, including this one, were built by the Africans. But the Europeans actually initiated the planet. Let's do this, ladies, and we'll push the Africans. But it is unfortunate that the Africans did not know what we were built. They were actually built in their tribes. They, they are their traps. Now, during that time, our ancestors did not have the kind of geopolitical boundaries that we have today, like Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, Burkina Faso. No. So the Europeans took advantage of that. There were different tribes and different uh, 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 languages that were being spoken by these different people. Two is the second chamber. It has the third, the fourth, and fifth chamber. In each one of them were about 200 enslaved African men. About 200 men were in the first chamber, about 200 men in the second chamber, about 200 men in the third, fourth, and fifth chamber. So that stands to reason that there were about 1,000 men in the male slave dungeon. The African men were here from two weeks to three months. Two weeks was the minimum duration. Three months was the maximum duration. Now for 200 men here, where we are right now, the only source of light in birth for them was that whole there. Can you see it? That was the only source of air and light. This is where the African men would eat, sleep, and defecate. They were lying on the floor. There was a massive influx of mosquitoes in here. Many of them had rashes all over their bodies. And they were here for that many time, three months, maximum duration, two weeks, minimum duration. On top of the male slave dungeon, the British slaveholders built a church. The name of the church is Society for the Propagation of the God. That's the fourth and fifth chamber. Above our heads is a big window. That window is connected to the church. The British built on top of the male slave dungeon. So they would wash, they would preach, they would pray, and stand right there and look at everything that was happening in the male slave dungeon. Now, this is the part that we do not understand. Why was the church built on top of the enslaved African man? It, it's very weird and very strange. Can we see the bricks now, like we did see? No. no. I need to show you something. Can you see these bricks? Now, the original floor of the male slave dungeon is made of bricks. This is the original floor. I can touch it with four of my fingers. 
that this that flow I am touching with one of my fingers is not part of the original flow. This is the original flow, which is made of bricks. This that flow is not part of the original flow. We were supposed to be seeing the original flow, which is made of bricks and not this dark flow. Because this dark flow was not part of the flow at all. But because there's been many African men here, this is why they were sleeping, eating, bleeding, defecating, dying. So they are human waste. The blood, the food that we eat, eventually power up over the years to become this dark flow. <laughs> so we are actually walking and standing on the DNA of the enslaved Africans were held. Now the reason why we saw these bricks in the first chamber is because in 1974, a group of archaeologists came here. They went to the first chamber and excavated the floor of the first chamber. Only the floor of the first chamber was excavated. But behind me is a very small cell. That's a sick cell. All the African men who were sick were held in there. And after they died, their bodies were taken to the ocean. That is why this chamber has a lot of light. This is where the British Army officers will look at them, identify all the sick ones, and put them there after they died. They will just take their dead bodies to the ocean. Before what you are standing is part of what you call the West African traditional spirituality. <clears throat> and this shrine used to be here before the construction of the slave castle began. But when the Europeans came, the shrine was taken to a different place. It was after the abolition that the shrine was brought back here. But there was a big tunnel, a very big tunnel right here. All the African men in the male slave dungeon were chained and forced to walk through the tunnel to the door we call the door of no return. But this tunnel got blocked off in 1834 to officially mark the abolition. Any questions? Please. All the British who died here were buried. Okay. But when the Africans died, their bodies were taken to the ocean. But these are graves of people. One, two, three, four. There are many graves, but these are the four known graves because the four known graves have the names of those who died here. But this grave is for an African, and the three graves there are for British occupants. But this African was not a slave, no. His father was a black slave trader who worked for the British merchants. His name is Philip Kwaku. Because he was privileged due to the fact that his father worked for the British merchant, when he was 11 years old, the church took him to England. He studied theology at the University of Oxford. outside the slave castle. You know, they gave her food and water, shelter and everything. The children that the African women gave birth to were light skinned children. And the British slave traders gave them African names, Johnson, Watson, you know, these were names that were given to them. Nicholas, Charles. Now back in the middle of the like this. It was during the colonial era that this door became big. But the original door was like this, very small and short door. Hmm. We call this door the Dovna Return because the moment the Africans walked through this door, that was the end of their lives and presence in the African continent. The biggest solutions we have got very far away from here. We call this Menden, it's Menden the Net. 
So it's organizing the nets for fishing. They normally go at night and they come early morning. And when they come back early morning, they have a lot of fish. The women from the market come and buy the fish from there. They take them to the market for public consumption. It's not only the women from the market that who come and buy the fish from them. Some of them right here. So, how y'all feeling? Just made it to the park observatory, little canopy walk. So, we about to go through, check it out. Falling too, my nigga. <laughs> when the sun come on, I'm spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money. Play something, I can spend some money too, money too, money too, money too, money too, money too, money too. When the sun come on, I'm spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money, spending money. Play something, I can spend some money. I'm highly paid, so I just live my life. That shit you niggas trying to do, I guarantee I did it twice. They say life's a gamble. Hit my joint and roll the dice. When you live in this high, you can't be afraid of heights. Book my flight to Vegas, will. 20 thou to stay tonight. Another 10 on champagne, my money. Hey, about to do this canopy walk. Pray for me. For real. Hiking, camping, canopy walkway. Akawaba. Akawaba. That boy right there. Hey. Every day. <laughs> I feel pretty good. Let's go. We're making yeah, 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 yeah. Move it. No Move pain, it. no gain. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Sweating bullets. Sweating bullets. Oh. So, the here. I was built in the year 1994 and officially opened in 1995 by two Canadians and six Ghanaians. And we still have some of the Ghanaians here doing maintenance early in the morning. And every six months, they change everything over here. And every bridge can take a bridge of eight tons. That's big to elephant bridge. So 60 or 70 people can be on the same bridge at a time. But because it is hanging bridge, as we are walking, they're going to walk, they're going to shake you. But Oh, yo. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's go. No. You can talk. Hello. I don't really have nothing good to say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh 
he's going. Yeah. He's out of there. <laughs> Hold my hand, baby. <laughs> it's very slippery. It's a strategic. Man. It's over. We did. All right, YouTube. So, man, we had a long day with the hikes. Them hikes, the adventure parks, the rainforest, all of that. It wore us out. So, we just now getting up. About to get moving around. About to go to, what's the name of the beach club again? La Buma Beach. Beach. Going on the way to La Buma Beach. Have a good time with some friends. And uh, we're just going to vibe it out. Storm. Okay. Is he asleep? Mm -hmm. I'm tired too, bro. I feel you. Right, just like that, it's a wrap. I'm tired, man. We got to get up 6 a.m. We got some more stuff going on tomorrow. Get with y'all in a minute. Peace.